Talk to anyone, and I mean anyone, and they've probably seen John Carpenter's Halloween. The movie has been praised since its initial release in 1978, and has been a key influence on countless other films such as Friday the 13th and It Follows. Halloween showed everyone that you didn't need crazy special effects, a huge budget and mainstream A-list actors to create a quality movie. All it took was a unique idea and talent. But this isn't a video about Halloween. It's a video on why I believe Halloween 2 actually trumps its predecessor. That's right. The movie that has been replaced thanks to the John Carpenter produced 2018 sequel to the original is, in my humble opinion, not only the best movie in the Halloween universe, but also one of the best horror movies ever. If you haven't turned off this video in disgust or written me an angry comment yet, allow me to beg your indulgence for a little while and I'll try to explain why I have this rather unpopular opinion. Halloween 2 was released in 1981, three years after Halloween took the cinema world by storm, but conveniently takes place on the very same night as the original, acting as a sort of direct continuation of the first movie. John Carpenter also gave up the director's chair to Rick Rosenthal, though Carpenter and Deborah Hill would return to writing the screenplay just as they did for the first one. These three would prove to be the proverbial trinity, if you will, in regards to the quality of this movie, and to be honest, most of that is a combination of a bigger budget and Rick Rosenthal in his directorial duties. First, let me say that I'm the biggest John Carpenter fan you will ever meet. I've loved almost everything he's directed, from Assault on Precinct 13 to They Live, and I will argue endlessly that his take on the thing is better than Alien. And yes, you can compare the two, because they are both horror movies with sci-fi alien creatures and a body count, even though one takes place in space and the other... You know what? Let's not get into that. That's a future video in and of itself. The point I'm trying to make here is that John Carpenter is an amazing director. One of my favourites of all time, really. But Rick Rosenthal fine-tunes the initial idea behind Halloween and churns out a damn near perfect horror movie when it's all said and done. Not that the first movie isn't a damn near perfect horror movie as well, but Halloween 2 reinvents the wheel, so to speak, and in my opinion does it just a little bit better. I've read that Carpenter changed a few scenes in post-production to the dismay of Rosenthal, so maybe Clashing Visions is why I prefer Halloween 2. Two heads are better than one, as the old adage says. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty. One of the reasons I find Halloween 2 to be such a stellar film is its consistency and logic. As I stated earlier, the film takes place minutes after the ending of the original and continues on late into Halloween night. If you watch Halloween 1 and 2 in succession, it truly feels like an extension rather than a sequel. In the first film, Dr. Loomis is trying to save the town of Haddonfield from a bloodbath. In the second film, he's damn near hysterical and at one point almost shoots a trick-or-treater just because he was wearing a similar outfit to Michael. Loomis is quite simply unhinged now, and it makes perfect sense. He just shot Michael six times in the chest, only for Myers to get up seconds later like one would after achieving a good night's rest. The cinematography is also superb, with many scenes being dark enough to make the viewer uneasy about what might be lurking in the shadows, but not so dark that you can't see anything. There's a lot of great half-shadowed shots of faces, particularly Michael's, and some aesthetically pleasing poster-quality shots that have something going on in the foreground, middle ground and background. Overall, it is a gorgeous film to look at, especially if you're a horror fan. But one of the defining reasons I prefer Halloween 2 to the original is Dick Warlock's portrayal of Michael Myers. Before Kane Hodder played the perfect Jason Voorhees, Dick Warlock played the perfect Michael Myers. Nick Castle starred as Michael in the first film and while he did a fine job, Warlock takes the character to a whole new level all without ever saying a word. The man's movements and mannerisms are like some sort of robotic force of nature. Dr Loomis is constantly telling anyone with an earshot that Michael Myers isn't human and is pure evil, and Warlock personifies that. It goes back to the consistency I talked about previously, where at the end of the first film Michael had been bested, so to speak, at least temporarily. But now he's back with more poise, focus and determination. He's got a job to do and he's going to see it through. Here's just one example of Warlock's brilliance. There's a scene where Michael Myers is descending a flight of steps and, well, he's just not walking like a human being would. 
Normally any given person would be holding onto a rail or a sidewall and be looking at their feet, making sure not to trip. Michael's descent is like that of a cyborg, looking straight ahead as if he had x-ray vision and could see his target through the walls. It harkens back to Dr. Loomis in the first Halloween saying, I watched him for 15 years sitting in a room staring at a wall. Not seeing the wall, looking past the wall, looking at this night, inhumanly patient, waiting for some secret silent alarm to trigger him off. It's poignant, masterful acting, and all through the work of body language. There's a bit more I could talk about in regards to the film, but that would involve me spoiling some key plot points and I could never forgive myself if you actually haven't seen Halloween 2. Or hell, even the first Halloween for that matter. It's okay if you've watched both and still prefer the first one, even after watching this little analysis of mine, but I hope you've garnered a new appreciation for this outstanding sophomore effort, or at the very least look at it in a slightly different light. So remember, when the weather gets chilly and the leaves start to fall, pop in a copy of Halloween 2, turn off the lights and smash the play button. And if you get too frightened, just keep telling yourself there's no such thing as the boogeyman. I promise you won't regret it.